shit. Oh, oh. there we one. Hi, uh, it's Thomas. I'm on the Illinois River trying to catch the worst fish in America. Asian carp. So it's basically how carp fishing works. Get some beers, drive up and down the river. Try to scare them up, hope they jump in your nuts. Pretty basic. The problem is no matter how many you get, you can't kill them all. Get these fish out of our river! The Asian carp was first brought to America in the 1960s by a bunch of good-intentioned scientists from the Fish and Wildlife Department who figured the fish's vacuum-like bottom-feeding tendencies would make them good at cleaning out farm ponds in the Ozarks, which they were. Unfortunately, they were also really good at reproducing. After a few of them escaped their ponds via flooding, they took root in the surrounding streams and quickly spread through the entire Mississippi River Basin, outbreeding all the native fish, eating up all the food, and completely choking every waterway they could get their eggs in. It's your classic immigrant scare story, just with fish, and I guess that's it. Everything else lines up, even the name. So that was a spot. Wow. With no natural predators, or at least none that can keep up with their Mormon-esque breeding rate, it's been left to us humans to devise a way to stop the Asian carp before they invade all our lakes and rivers, which we've done with our customary ingenuity and aplomb. Once a year, this town hosts a redneck fishing tournament, which basically amounts to everybody bringing their boats out, driving them up and down the river and trying to kill as much Asian carp as they can, which is pretty easy because in addition to being invasive and not having any natural predators, one of the Asian carp's more obnoxious ticks is that when motors or any loud noise disturbs it, it jumps out of the water, often into boats, and even more often into like people's faces oh, and laps. Oh. Right in the face. Oh, man. Funny, but also extremely dangerous. It can knock people off water skis. Some of the fish weigh up to 30 or 40 pounds. There's ones on record the size of like, a 10-year-old. So I just got nailed with a uh, Asian carp, and I'm now covered in what seems like fish semen. Oh, but I got it. These are what we hate and love at the same time. Yeah. Love to hate them. You want one? Come on! Another day gone great! Fun, guys! Ready? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! That's a spot, Gary! That's a spot! Like torpedoes! There's like no way of figuring out which direction they're gonna come oh, from. No. They just fucking see. jump. It's an ambush. And these fish, like, stink more than most fish. Yeah, they're just slimy and stinky. They hit and they just explode with blood also. That's why I'd rather have them die real quick and flop. Yeah, they'll flop around the boat. They're like the grossest fish, right? Yeah. Pretty good so far. We've got, what, three in like about five minutes? Is this usual? You could catch an infinite amount of them if you wanted to. Do you guys think these, like, this, like, cull basically helps? Like, kill them like a few thousand? You could come out here next weekend and it'll be the same. We got it exactly. While the redneck fishing tourney is a great way for river rats and other drunken yahoos to let off steam, it does nothing to curb the Asian carp's explosive growth rate, which in the course of decades allowed them to spread all the way to the threshold of the Great Lakes. So everybody here hates these fucking fish. And the general scientific consensus is they're basically like ichthyan kudzu, and from here they're going to get everywhere in America, and in 20 or 30 years they're going to be the only fish we have. The acute concern right now is that they're going to get into the Great Lakes. There's been DNA found that suggests that some of the carp might already be in Lake Michigan, which would be disastrous because the Great Lakes not only house 90% of America's fresh water and a $7 billion a year fishing industry, they connect to almost every major waterway in the Northeast. The Army Corps of Engineers and the federal government are kind of freaking out and they've convened a number of summits, put together a lot of proposals. Obama has uh, nominated a carp czar to take care of them and try to block them off before they get through the Chicago waterways into Lake Michigan and from there the rest of the Great Lakes. It's all a, a pretty rich hullabaloo for fish. The Army Corps of Engineers has jurisdiction over the Chicago waterway system, the most likely route of entry for the Asian carp. Among the proposals they've floated for keeping the Asian carp out of Lake Michigan are an electric barrier, not unlike the invisible fence used to keep your dog at bay, only underwater, 
an air cannon to scare away the fish, also underwater, some sort of UV light sterilization box that kills the fish's eggs, and an $18 billion solid barricade that would effectively disconnect the Great Lakes from the Mississippi River and take an estimated 25 years to complete. Which seems like a lot of time and money to spend on a bunch of fish. Though, as we've established, these are some particularly lousy fish. Asian carp are a threat to whatever environment they move into because they take it over. They're not bottom feeders, they're filter feeders. So they simply vacuum up everything that's in their way. They completely suck out the column of, of life. What happens if like, no action is taken? Does, does the ecosystem adapt to the presence of the Asian carp in it? Or will it actually collapse the ecosystem? Well, I think those are two different uh, terms for the same thing. A completely foreign presence that destroys the system we're dependent upon, um, that would be a form of, of evolution and adaptation, but it would be a destruction and uh, ecosystem disaster for the systems we depend upon. Do you think it's possible to remove the carp from the Mississippi and, and all the other waterways that they're in right now? I think it is extraordinarily hard to eradicate an invasive species once it's established. Extraordinarily hard. Is the damage to the ecosystem, has it already occurred yet? Well, lots occurred. I mean, you look at what's happened in terms of the eradication of native fish in the Illinois River. You know, it's like you, you don't have a lot of bass fishing tournaments in the Illinois River right now. Actually, aside from the redneck variety down in Bath, there's little tournament fishing of any kind going on in the Illinois. And what fishing there is is necessarily carp-centric. You want a commercial fish in Illinois, you're going to have to deal with the Asian carp. There's okay. no way around it, otherwise you're wasting your time. And you can't throw back 50% of what you catch or more, maybe 80, 90% some days, you can't throw that back. That's you got to sell it. This most guys money fish because you catch the bulk of them. We're out with Dave who uh, does commercial fishing. It's also a cop. Pretty morning. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, nice. It's fish, it's a good day. It's kind of like herding cats more than anything, but you try to keep them as much boxed in as you can. And you'll see it when the school hits this net, it will blow up. I mean, it'll literally just blow up with fish. Oh, just like, drop them yeah. bombs. Yeah, you see them big ones, you want to make sure you take it easy because they'll roll right out of there. Got the doctor wages again. Yep. That's the second fish I'll let go. One of the common misnomers with Asian carp is that it's a single fish. The term actually refers to four different species of Asian carp that have each invaded the Mississippi Basin. The grass carp, the big head carp, the silver carp, and the mysterious black carp. The silvers are the only ones that jump, the assholes of the bunch. I mean, you could have something like this in the Great Lakes and nobody would ever know. Yeah. Unless you accidentally snagged him, which, I mean, look how big that mouth is. So, I mean, you can actually stick your arm down his throat and have plenty of room. Ugh. But why would you want to? He's worth probably a little over $2, so. The silver's only 10 The uh, actual big heads actually bring a pretty good price right now. You can get about 25 cents a pound. Okay. Like say, they're the ones that their heads are worth as much as anything. If you can get a real big one that's, you know, 30 pounds or so, that their head's really worth some money. What's the most you've pulled in? By myself, I had, uh, earlier this spring, I had 10,000 in one night. It took me two days to get them all in by myself, though. Oh. You think the uh, cost of carp will come up and make it a more profitable fish? If uh, the right people get in here doing the right stuff, well, I like police work, but uh, my passion's fishing. It's not the thing to get into right now, but I can see a change if everything can come together. So there's, there's an industry to be had here. In order for commercial fishing to help solve the Asian carp crisis, it has to exist in the first place. Dave was the sole angler we saw on our stretch of river that entire morning, 
And in order to sell the fish he caught, he has to ice them down and drive them 100 miles through the 90 degree heat to a processing plant on the Mississippi River. That's the closest spot. Oh. Test the string. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's. <laughs> I think he got you, you didn't get him. <laughs> So this is Dave's load for the morning. This is pretty good. Just gonna hose him down, put some ice on him, and um, then we're gonna drive him to be processed up in Thompson. We did pretty good today. I have no complaints. Yeah, they're still fairly moist. Did all right. Yeah, they're good. I started sorting the fish. I was wondering how they were going to get out. There's going to be like a giant vacuum hose. Or oh, yeah, no. Nothing like that here. Let's put them on the scale. They'll subtract how much the tub weighs, and then obviously that's what's left is fish. For their records and for the state, we got to, I got to sign it and I got to put where I caught them, Illinois River. And I leave them with that. They got me in the computer, and uh, today's earnings was $989.50, which is pretty decent for it's one a good guy day's working. Work, yeah. That's a good day for me. Dave's $1,000 haul definitely puts the lie to the idea that Asian carp are inedible garbage fish, a misconception we heard from the mouths of tipsy rednecks and credible news sources alike. All Asian carp are edible, and in fact, three of the carp species are extremely edible, just maybe not suited to the Midwest American palate. We did a lot of international marketing on these fish. Uh, a lot of places around the world, they're grown and raised as food for people. We're the only country in the world that doesn't embrace our carp. Why do you think that is? I, th I think Americans aren't used to having a bone-in fish. Right. I mean, of... we've always had beef and chicken and catfish. Even bone-in chicken is sometimes a right. little for some people. We're like kind of picky eaters as a culture. Right. So what we're doing is we're removing the uh, belly cavity out of the fish uh -huh. to help bring the core temperature down. We'll go into a um, ozone bath. From there, we go into an ice bath. And that's it? That's it. Okay. If you look at the head here, yeah. this cheek meat right here ah. is considered a highly, highly prized delicacy. The bigger this cheek meat is, the more valuable it is. Okay. And it's very sweet and flavorful. That's the most prized part of the fish. Okay. Is, is Big Head the only one you can sell, or are the others uh, viable too? It's got the most demand right now. We yeah. can sell, uh, we sell an average of 45 to 50,000 pounds of Big Head a week. Wow. In the U.S. on the fresh market. So what do you, not to be like, like what do you think is going to happen? But, but what do you think is going to happen with the carp? Let me put it to you this way. You've heard of common carp, right? Yeah. Yellow carp? That was an invasive species to this North America at one time. Right. What's happened to that fish? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And we don't consider it an invasive and species. And you don't consider it an invasive species anymore. It's like same with the horse. Right. Right. So. I guess just how long do you think it's going to take for, for Asian carp to just become Asian American carp, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. As, as, that's good. As people get more used to it and understanding it, and as the market grows, there will be a, a kind of a settle down on that. Yeah. Even the least marketable of the Asian carps, the silver, the leaping slimy bastard fish that rednecks in bath dump in filthy cardboard boxes, is loved by some. That's a jumping fish. Actually, this is a small one. See how beautiful the, the, the flesh is? You know, nothing wrong with that. We're gonna put into that broth right here. Onion, garlic, wine is very good, but we are on the wine today, so we use beer. Yeah, so this is the fish that hit me in the face yes. earlier. This yeah, is the that, fish that, that, I hate. That, that's the one that hit you in the head. Mm. Really? Really you will never know. And actually, this fish slapped your face earlier. Right, yeah. It's pretty basic. Just like give it a new name and eat it. Silver Fang is a name that we come up with to rebrand Asian carp. The only thing that makes sense is to be able to put the fishermen at work, take this fish out, and process this fish into value added product. 
our government came up and had the idea with a couple of engineers to build dams around the Great Lake. Dams don't take the fish out of the water. You still will have to, to deal with the fish. But if you give the problem to guys like me, then we're gonna cook it. Learning to love the carp may be the healthiest way for people to adapt to their presence, but it doesn't bring back the fish they've displaced or undisrupt the ecosystems they've invaded. And if the carp make it into the Great Lakes, it wouldn't stop them from screwing up its entire food chain and potentially triggering algae blooms, like the one that made Lake Erie undrinkable. So what do we do? Block off the Mississippi from Lake Michigan and completely fuck the course of a river in the process? It wouldn't be our first time. This is the Chicago River. It originally flowed into Lake Michigan, but when they built the canals to connect it to the uh, Mississippi River Basin, reversed the flow downstream. They had to build a series of locks to uh, basically to keep Lake Michigan from emptying out into the Gulf of Mexico. Under that bridge is where the Chicago River naturally began here. Mm -hmm. To the left of us, is the uh, Ship and Sanitary Canal, which was created 100 years ago to move water from the Chicago River out of the Chicago area because it was so contaminated, it was killing people. So that's where we are today. And we have, instead of simply moving some untreated sewage out of Chicago, it's become a highway from invasive species into the Great Lakes and out of the Great Lakes into the Mississippi. And the Asian carp, is a good indicator of the problems with the status quo. It's not serving the interests of this century or the people or the ecosystem or the economy. So the whole reason we have to worry about carp infesting the Great Lakes in the first place is because 100 years ago, Chicago decided to make the Mississippi River its toilet. This is actually where we originally fucked with nature before all the other things with invasive species. And this canal is the real villain of the carp saga. This is the part that gets lost in the Army's $18 billion proposal to dam up the SNS Canal. It isn't just some maniac engineer's wet dream. The canal really doesn't belong there in the first place. Removing the canal would not only stop the Asian carp and keep future invasive species from passing between the lakes and the Mississippi, it would restore two distinct ecosystems to their original bifurcate nature. That's worth a few bill at least, isn't it? The carp are just one aspect of the myriad issues related to the fact that we made these canals. Unfortunately, they're a very telegenic aspect of it. It's really easy for the media to vilify a fish that hits you in the face and covers you in slime. Um, also really easy to write stories about it and to take videos of it, as we have. It's far more tricky to get people interested in fixing century-old infrastructure before it allows the Asian carp to go from a regional calamity to a continental one, especially when the very word infrastructure is like a thousand milligram dose of Ambien blown straight into your ear. Boredom notwithstanding, we need to get started on this canal thing soon, before we're all rolling around in fish guts like those bozos downriver. It's hard to plug again. Ah, fuck! Oh, God. You gotta go fast one yeah. more time. Got it? Okay. Oh, fuck, shit. I'm not a good stubber. These things are hard. Ah, there we go.